Instagram. It is Dr. Emily, functional podiatrist, human movement specialist, founder of EBFA Global, and inventor of Naboso Technology. So I am making a bold statement here, but I'm slightly doing that to get your attention. Many people, too many people, are doing and teaching short foot wrong. Yes, you have heard me. I have done workshops all around the world and have had people told, tell me and teach me the way that they have been taught to do short foot. And they have been taught by leaders in the industry and online, on social media, on the proper way, proper way to do short foot. Now, if you are not familiar with short foot, short foot is one of the most powerful exercises to activate your feet. Now, when we activate the feet, yes, we mean from an intrinsic perspective, which means that we are getting into the small muscles in the bottom of the feet. However, short foot is not just for activating the intrinsics and for lifting the arch. That's not just the only purpose of short foot. Short foot is also an integrated exercise, which means that it is integrating what's called the deep front fascia line. It is integrating your feet, which is your body's foundation, with your body's center, center of stabilization, which is your core. So the foundation to everything that EBFA teaches in our education and how I approach my patients is through what is called foot to core sequencing. Feet to your center, your foundation to your center. They must connect to each other. This means that when you teach short foot and you perform short foot, that you are thinking of your core. You are engaging your core, your deep core, your pelvic floor. And because your pelvic floor connects to your diaphragm, you must be cueing breathing. Now, one of the most common incorrect ways that I'm seeing short foot performed. This is both through social media and that I've been explained that it's been taught to others who then take my workshop is that they are being told to push the first metatarsal head down. Do not, I repeat, do not push the first metatarsal head down when you are doing short foot. Now the reason, you need a reason right? A reason why it is cued the way that it is cued. A reason why you don't want to push the first metatarsal head down. So let's review the anatomy. So when we do short foot, we are activating what's called the deep front fascia line. The deep front fascia line, I will show you here. So this is the deep front line, if you can see. So we have your long flexors. So your flexor hallucis longus, flexor digitorum longus. This blends into the posterior tibialis and the tibialis anterior, which goes into your adductors, into your obturator fascia and your pelvic floor. There you can see the man skeleton with the fascia. But the emphasis here that I want to make is that your long flexors, flexor hallucis longus, flexor digitorum longus, that is the root or the anchor or the most distal aspect of your deep front fascia line. Now the action of your long flexors, flexor digitorum longus, flexor hallucis longus, is to, it runs in the deep lower leg, behind the ankle bone, under the bottom of the foot, into the tips of the toes, so the distal tip of the toe. Think underneath the toenail, almost. The action of the long flexors is not to flex your toes. That is not what it does. What it does is it anchors your toes to the ground. It is an action that is connecting you to the ground when you take a step, when you jump, etc. We must have a force going down when we go up or forward. That is the only way that you generate power. So what I want you to think about when you do short foot is the action that is happening in your toes. The way that I cue short foot is pushing the tips of your toes down into the ground. Now, when we do this, I'm gonna show you real quick how I cue short foot, and then I'm gonna give a very detailed explanation of why you do not want to push your first metatarsal head down. So I'm gonna show you down. We're going down a little bit lower here, okay? And what we're going to do is, hopefully you can see my feet here on our furry little carpet. So you are here, you are starting with your feet in a nice neutral position here. You are going to find your foot tripod. This is just to center your body's body weight over your foot. That does not mean push your tripod down. 
First met head, fifth met head heel. One, two, three. Lift your toes, spread them out, and place them back down onto the ground. Now, when you do short foot, you are going to, just gonna tip this a little bit, you're gonna push the tips of your toes down into the ground, down into the ground. I'll go on this just so you can see it a little bit more. Yes, so I'm here, I'm spreading my toes out, I'm placing them down, and then I'm pushing the tips of my toes down into the ground. That is the cue that I'm giving myself or to my patient or to the athlete or to the client. If we look at this from a side perspective, I'm on my foot tripod, I spread my toes, I place them down into the ground, and then I push the tips of the toes down into the ground. Do you see that I just came off of my first metatarsal head? Now the purpose of doing short foot is that you are actually engaging, do it again here, engaging here. Yes, your flexors, but guess what? You're also engaging your plantar fascia, your plantar fascia. Part of your plantar fascia is that it does what's called the reverse windless mechanism. Yes, there's a positive windless mechanism, but there is also a reverse windless mechanism. Part of the action of the flexors and your intrinsics and the plantar fascia in the reverse when this mechanism is to get you off of the ball of your foot. So doing short foot increases your medial arch. Doing short foot increases your lateral arch. And then increasing short foot increases your transverse arch. When you increase your transverse arch, that is a lift in your metatarsal heads. Now, why do you not want to push your first metatarsal head down. Do not push your first metatarsal head down. The reason is, think, what is the muscle that you engage when you push your first metatarsal head down? It happens to be your peroneus longus. Now your peroneus longus, if the action you're telling yourself is pull met first met down, when you pull first met down to stay on your first metatarsal head, you are engaging your peroneus longus. Is that in here? No. The peroneus longus is not part of your deep front fascia line. Now you may say, oh, but Dr. Splickle, I heard that you need first met plantar flexion to get proper mechanics at the first MPJ when you walk. Guess what? The first met depression or plantar flexion that happens when you walk to get first MPJ dorsiflexion is actually not a true plantar flexion down into the ground. It is actually a reverse plantar flexion going away from the body. Let me show you what this looks like. So we come down again. So we are here, back to the floor. So what is happening in order to dorsiflex your first MPJ, your first metatarsal head must go down. It must plantar flex, yes? Does that mean when you do short foot, push your first met head down? No, because the way that your first met is actually plantar flexing when you dorsiflex your first MPJ is that it is actually going away from your body. So your toe, to get here, your first met is actually going that way. That is what first met plantar flexion is. It is not into the ground, down. It is actually reverse from the way that your body is shifting, going back while your body goes forward. That is what first met plantar flexion actually is. Now, to take it a little further, one last thing of how we could take this further, yes, is that the first met plantar flexion, what happens, I don't have a skeleton. Oh, I'm so sorry, I don't have a skeleton of the foot. However, when you look at the foot straight this way, this is your foot, and again, I'll show you my foot, here we go. So down on the foot here. So when you look at the foot this way, this way, the lowest part of your foot, yes, if you're looking at the foot this way on the ground, the lowest part of your foot here, Yes, this is your first metatarsal head, but what is happening there or what is located there, which is actually the lowest part of your foot, when you look at it this way, are two little bones called your sesamoid. So you are and could be teaching someone to push down into their sesamoids. This can actually increase the chance of sesamoiditis and sesamoid fractures. You do not want to overemphasize plantar flexion 
of the first ray first met head down into the ground because that's not where it goes. It actually goes away from the body. If you push it down into the ground and that's already the lowest point of the foot, you are now putting that individual at risk of sesamoiditis and sesamoid fractures. These are a bitch to heal. I do not like healing sesamoid fractures and sesamoiditis because they do not heal well. There's not good circulation to that area and they're constantly moving so they just do not heal well. We want to be thinking of the proper mechanics. To add the last layer to it, you're pushing the tips of the toes down. There's going to be a relative lift of your first metatarsal head because that is part of your transverse arch. Yes, you get a lift of your medial arch, which is amazing. You are engaging your intrinsics and your posterior tibialis. This goes all the way into your deep core to get further engagement. Every time you push your toes down into the ground and engage short foot, I want you to lift your pelvic floor and exhale. So we are coordinating breath, deep core, and arch of the foot or foot. So all of the domes of the foot, all of the domes of the body are essentially lifting with the exhale or with the action of stabilization. Toes down, arch up, pelvic floor up, exhale, diaphragm up. You could technically put your tongue into your palate as well. So again, as our summary, we are not going to push the first metatarsal head down anymore. We understand the muscles that are part of the deep front line and that short foot is a deep front line exercise. It is an action of the flexors in the digits. The result when you engage the flexors is that you get a relative lift of the transverse arch, including your first metatarsal. This is going to be coordinated with your deep core. Now we also know that the muscle that pulls the first metatarsal head down is your peroneus longus. And that's not part of your deep front line. It's actually your lateral line and your spir spiral line. That engages after your deep front line. We also know that first met plantar flexion or first ray plantar flexion. Yes, it is necessary for first MPJ dorsiflexion but it's actually a relative plantar flexion. It is happening at a specific time in gait or in first MPJ dorsiflexion. It's actually not down, it is back. It is away from your body. And if we decide to push our first metatarsal head down, we are now putting that individual at risk of increasing pressure to their sesamoids, which could be sesamoiditis or sesamoid fractures. If you have any questions related to short foot, please do not hesitate to reach out. I hope that moving forward, you are shifting the way that you cue short foot. If you are already cueing short foot with the lift of the first metatarsal, keep doing it, keep rocking it. Don't forget the breath. I hope to see you guys online again. Check out one of our trainings at EBFA Global. Stay barefoot strong and take care.